All right. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Hawk Talk. Yours truly, Beth Reberger, the Harper Wellness Manager, coming at you. And I'm Melanie Duhai, the Administrative Assistant to the Dean of Students and Student Engagement. So on today's Hawk Talk, we are actually hearing from some stellar folks, I might be biased, but y'all are stellar, who work in access and disability services at Harper College uh, to really better understand the services that they offer and some things that you might not know about the office. Yeah, so to get us started off, we have Rebecca Ramirez Malagon and Madison Overby with us today from ADS. First off, could you each tell us a little bit about you and your role in the ADS office? Rebecca, would you like to start us off? Sure. So I'm the um, manager for the office and um, my primary role is to um, support the access advocate, so Madison, um, with any accommodation related questions. It's also a kind of oversee daily operations in our office. Um, I rarely meet with students, but I am available um, to meet with students um, and assist uh, families. I do a lot of like Spanish translation as well for our office for families who may not speak English or have parents who, not, who do not speak English. Um, but for the most part, if I'm meeting with a student, it's, it's going to be re related, related to an accommodations appeal um, or some other circumstances that, you know, parents and, and students would want to meet with, with me um, for. And my name is Madison. I am new to Harper. I just started as an access advocate in August. Um, as an access advocate, I have a caseload of students. I conduct intake appointments with them and help them with their eligibility for accommodations within their courses. Um, I connect with faculty members and also provide programming for disability cultural programming on campus. Awesome, and we are excited to have you on board. Madison, I know I've gotten to work with you a little bit already and it's been a, a wonderful, relationship and so I'm excited for the the programs to come so um, to kind of you know really talk about some of the things that your offices or your office offers something that I found interesting from the National College Health Assessment survey that was distributed to our Harper students back in March of 2020 is that 21.9 percent of Harper students said that living with an ongoing chronic or medical condition is a top impediment to their learning. So can you tell me a little bit about ADS and how they help serve students who might be living with an ongoing medical or chronic condition, but also what are some examples of those accommodations ADS can provide for these students? And so uh, Rebecca, if you wanna kick us off first. Sure, so we, we do serve a, a large number of students, as you've said, with chronic illnesses. Um, and, and it varies from chronic illnesses that <clears throat> can be sporadic to chronic illnesses that <clears throat> can have an ongoing, like everyday effect on students' lives. Um, I think a lot of times students don't, don't necessarily realize that a chronic illness can be viewed as a disability that our office would accommodate. Um, essentially, uh, uh, what we view as a, a medical condition um, that can be also viewed as a disability is what daily impact it has on a student's life. So, for example, we have students who have Crohn's disease. That's something that, you know, we will definitely accommodate students for. So, I think um, that the big thing to remember is students can come to our office and just have like a um, informal intake if they if they wish to do so to inquire about their possibility of receiving accommodations given their medical conditions. So um, it's always I always suggest students just meet with us. You never know until you you've asked. Um, and it's not uncommon to have a lot of students with like I've said what would typically not be viewed as a disability, more so as just a medical condition. Um, and we can still provide accommodations for them. And just to, to go along with that, 
I know you had mentioned Crohn's disease and every situation is different, but what are some, some accommodations that your office might provide as it relates to maybe some of those ongoing or you know, chronic medical conditions? Sure. So it would, um, we really factor in a lot of things. One, we would factor in the student's um, medical condition or disability, also the course that the student is taking, and then the fundamental requirements of the course. For example, what might be appropriate for a lecture sociology course may not be appropriate if you're a nursing student in a clinical setting. Um, so it really depends and varies, but some of the accommodations could be like breaks during class if you, you know, need to take breaks um, for your medical condition or like some of our students who are diabetic, we would allow them to bring snacks or drinks um, into class. So it could vary, really it depends. We don't have a one size fits all, like really when we're speaking of accommodations and assigning accommodations to students, it really does, it's a very tailored um, thing that we, we do, especially I find that to be the case with students who have medical conditions. It's a very tailored plan that we create working in collaboration with the student, faculty, and then ex as advocate. Which is why that intake is so important, as you mentioned, because every student is unique and different and has maybe certain needs of their own. And so, Madison, anything else you want to add to that? No, I think that um, was a great answer. Yeah, our accommodations are very individualized, and that's why it's great to just have an intake appointment if you have any questions or any student that might be curious to see if they could receive accommodations. It's always good to reach out to us, and we can always have those conversations and see what that could look like or their eligibility may be moving forward. To go along with that, are there any particular services that ADS provides that um, individuals would be surprised to know about? Madison, do you want to answer that one? Um, I can start it and then you can let me know if I miss anything. Um, our office does do quite a bit. So we have you know, accommodations for classes, but also for testing, um, accommodations for events. We can really help students if they are struggling in any sense of the term within their courses. We offer a lot of support and assistance and can just be resources for them to provide check-ins as often as necessary. Um, and we can meet them where they're at and help them throughout the process. I don't know if there are specific services that maybe I'm missing. Rebecca, if you want to jump in. Yeah, so again, kind of, um, I mean, there are, of course, some very common accommodations that our office provides. A common one is like time and a half. Um, I would say for exams, so extended time for exams. We have a lot of students who use like a, what's called Kurzweil, a software reader um, that reads their, their textbooks essentially, or it's an audio format that the students can use for, for textbooks. So those are common, but then we do have very untraditional and really like Madison said, it's, it's unpredictable. Um, for example, during this online, you know, learning world that we're in right now, we've cut, we've had a lot of like uncommon accommodations, everything from um, like how we're conducting audio um, exams or having like a live reader like we're doing now um, where the student and a reader meet via WebEx or Zoom to have the exam read to them. Um, when we're on campus, we've had some unique accommodations like having what's called a swivel, which is essentially like a robot in class that goes along and records what's going on in the class and um, allows the student to be remote but still actively present and involved in the classroom. Um, and essentially they, you know, participate through this swivel robots who's going around in the classroom. So that's something pretty unique. So um, it just depends really like there is, 
if the accommodation is reasonable, if we can reasonably accommodate a student, again, meeting the fundamental requirements of a course, there is no unusual or accommodation that we, we won't provide a student. It just has to be reasonable within the legal guidelines. Wow, and I learned something, I had no idea that a thing called Swivel exists, which is pretty rad and um, amazing, especially with technology in today's time. So that's that's really cool to hear. And I think um, both of you have mentioned this, it's really starting that conversation and asking, which I know can sometimes feel daunting or overwhelming, but really you're meeting with, you know, folks like you all in the office, which are really uh, amazing people. So I think just asking is, is that first step. Um, so a next question to kind of go along with the conversation is, you know, in our world, there is so much stigma surrounding the word disability. And frankly, I think some students and employees I talk to are often surprised to learn that some things are classified as a disability. And I know, Rebecca, you had mentioned, you know, something like diabetes, right? Um, with that in mind, you know, what is one thing you would want students or employees to know about ADS and the word disability? And if you want to kick us off first, uh, Madison, go ahead. Sure, yeah. So I think that can kind of be a loaded question. Um, disability definitely has a negative stigma in kind of the world, but the community is really trying to take that word back and make it empowering. So there are students that identify as being disabled and find that as a point of strength within their identity and within their personhood as it is. And that's something that, you know, our office, we're rooted in the social justice model of disability. We really try to encourage and support our students in that sense. I think what's really important kind of as you started this question to recognize as staff and faculty that it's hard to ask for help as a student and to recognize that you need additional support. So to respect and understand our work is really to respect and understand the students and the help that they need. So I wish that would be something that is, you know, more commonly accepted across our campus. And I think we're definitely getting there within our community. Um, but that's something that I think we, we find important and we try to really support that that word is changing and so is the the view around it and so it shouldn't be a negative it should be something that you know you embrace and you seek help when you need it yes and i, I love that it's like the u uniqueness of who you are and not viewed as something that is less than and which is really important and rebecca anything else to add there no, I think Madison did a great job of um, explaining that. I would just say that, yeah, they're, 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 we need to normalize uh, disability more in our society. Um, I don't know that that it's just Harper that maybe, you know, if students are feeling that it's just Harper that um, makes them feel comfortable with disclosing that they have a disability. Um, I do think that given we're going in a, a right direction, especially as a college. Um, Madison's been working very hard with April, one of our other access advocates on um, providing programming that helps normalize uh, individuals with disabilities a little bit more. It really is not uh, just like any other identity we have as a person. It's not all that that a person is. Um, it's a part of what a person is, but there's so many other factors to individuals with disabilities. And also, um, I think we could do a better job as faculty and staff of, you know, disclosing, you know, if you're comfortable with, if you have a disability yourself, um, you know, to make it look normal, to normalize it again for students. Um, so, so, I just think that as a whole, it's just that that we're like normalizing that having a disability doesn't make you, it's not it's not anything wrong or doesn't make you unable to accomplish something. It simply means that you need some assistance to to accomplish what what you are capable of doing. Right, and that intersectionality piece is so crucial, and especially 
you know, any disability, there are some that you might be able to see, but also we talk a lot about those hidden disabilities as well, which we can't often see those things. And so I think that's an important piece that I, I know that the two of you are big advocates on as well. So thank you. Beth and I want to thank you both so much for joining us today and sharing the great services of the ADS department. If students wanted to get in contact with your office, how would they do so? The best way to contact our office is by calling the front desk. The number there is 847-925-6266. Um, and then the front de desk could direct students to what the next steps are. Um, you can also search on the Harper Main website for ADS, just do a general search, ADS, or Access and Disability Services, and our main website, our webpage will co uh, come up, and you can also view our contact information there. And lastly, we do have a ADS email alias, which is just ads at harpercollege.edu, which you can email with any questions. So lots of ways to get in contact with you all. And again, thank you so much for describing briefly who you are, but also the importance of, of your office. And if any students are listening out there, your first step is just giving them a call or an email and they will help guide you through every step of the process. So thank you.